Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Tyrion Cuthbert, Attorney of the Arcane. So, due to a technical hiccup, my mic wasn't being picked up the last two videos I recorded, so we're, uh, so I'm doing this trial again. This is the first time you'll see it. Fortunately, because of a screw up I made last last recording, I know what the correct solution is here. Objection! So I guess I'll just move through the trial. Of course, I remember it very clearly. I only stood at the entrance. In that case, I'd like you to take a look at the map of the tavern. If we take a look at this map, that would place you right here where W is. Am I correct? Uh, of course I was that. I, I was. I do not n know what you I do not know what you wish to achieve by having me repeat that fact. Well, I find it interesting that you eliminated the crime scene from all the way back there. Considering that Conjure Height only eliminates an area within 15 feet. What? The spell's range is irrelevant. We've already established that the victim would have been illuminated by Mage Flight. During his testimony, Lord Pierce clearly stated that he couldn't see what was happening. That's why he cast Conjure Light in the first place. Uh, however, Conjure Light doesn't work like a normal source of light. It only provides illumination up to 15 feet of the caster. And no further. If he had stayed at the entrance, his spell wouldn't have done anything to help illuminate the scene. But what does this mean? Lord Pierce, do you illuminate the crime scene or not? Well, well I... I can answer that question for you, Your Honor. Fort Pierce did illuminate the, the scene of the crime. He illuminated it because he was standing right where it happened. Mr. Cuthbert, are you trying to say that Lord Pierce was that close to where the murder occurred? How would that be possible? Well, there's only one way this scenario would make sense, Your Honor. And that would be if Gary Pierce was the one who murdered Clemhart McCoy. Hold on for a moment. This is absurd. I could have easily used a different spell to illuminate the room. And which spell would that be, Pierce? I... I, uh... The name escapes me. I'm not sure which one it was now that I think about it. You idiot. Well, maybe we can figure it out together. When you relinquish your spell compendium to the court. What? What? This is a clear violation of my privacy. Steelwind, why aren't you objecting to this? If you would listen to my instructions, you wouldn't be in this situation. You've made your bed, now lie in it. Steel wind, you treacherous. That's enough. It appears that the prosecution has no objections. With everything that has occurred, I must ask that Lord Pierce relinquish his spell compendium to the court. Garrick Pierce's spell compendium has been added to your notes. 
Prestidigitation has been added to your notes. Conjure Water has been added to your notes. Frost Wave has been added to your notes. Vape Liquid has been added to your notes. Good job, Tyrion. We got his spell compendium. With that, this case is as good as yours. Or is it? She didn't even try to stop you from taking a spell compendium. She wouldn't let that happen just to spite Lord Pierce. She definitely still has something up her sleeve. Your Honor, I've looked at the spells in Lord Pierce's compendium. Conjure Light is the only spell he could cast that would shed blue light. This renders his statement, his testimony, and many of his statements false. You can practically hear Lord Pierce grinding his teeth. Your Honor, Lord Pierce could very well be a suspect in the murder of Flynnhart McCoy. The defense argues that this presents enough reasonable doubt to acquit the defendant. I acknowledge that Lord Pierce's actions are suspect. However, I will not pass a verdict just yet. There is much more we need to learn. But that's not how it works. We proved that there's reasonable doubt. That should be enough to acquit you, right? In a normal case, maybe, but... It's different for this trial. The public won't accept an unsolved homicide involving magic. And as we can unequivocally prove your innocence, the court will keep drawing out this case. What? But that's not fair. That's just how the system works. Our court system doesn't exist to exact the justice. It exists so the kingdom can save face. Now, However, the court will be suspending the trial of Celeste McCoy until further notice. That is, until Lord Pierce can be investigated as a possible suspect. Objection! Right, she objects. A possible suspect. The very idea is preposterous, Your Honor. Damn it, you knew she was planning something. Let's revisit the basic facts of this case, shall we? Glenhart McCoy was murdered using a blade with a transmutation spell active on it. Mr. Cuthbert, why don't you tell me the spells that Lord Pierce knows? Um, alright. His spells are Prestidigitation, Conjure Light, Conjure Water, Frost Wave, and Shape Liquid. You've realized it too, haven't you? Lord Pierce doesn't know any transmutation spells that can be channeled through a solid object. What? Well, that, that can't be right. Huh. You're right. You're absolutely right, Lady Steelwind. I couldn't... Possibly have committed the murder. I see. With that in mind, that would leave the defendant as the only possible killer. But he was the only other mage there. He has to be the real murderer. But he doesn't know any transmutation spells that can affect a solid object. We can't prove that he stabbed him while casting magic. Wait a minute. How did he do it then? She's right, how did he do it? If there are any traces of transmutation magic on the wound, then one heart was definitely stabbed by something magical. But none of his transmutation spells can affect a steel blade. Does that mean he used something else? The defense did cast some doubt on this witness's testimony. Nevertheless, I must conclude that he could not have possibly committed the murder. With that in mind, please wait, Your Honor. We still can't conclude that Lord Pierce couldn't have committed the crime. What are you on about now? Lady Steelwind said it herself, you commoner. 
I don't know any spells that can be channeled through a metal blade. He's right, which can only mean one thing. You didn't use a metal blade, did you? What nonsense is this? The autopsy report clearly states that the wound was created by a blade. If he didn't channel magic through a blade, how could he possibly have committed the crime? Yes, your claim seems quite contrary to the facts thus far, Mr. Cuthbert. Which spell could Lord Pierce have possibly used to kill the victim? Easy. The shaped liquid allows him to freeze the liquid as well. You see, Your Honor, Garrett Pierce didn't kill the victim using a sword. He killed him using an object ex shaped exactly like a sword. What? I'm afraid I don't understand, Mr. Kerr, Mr. Cuthbert. I'd like for the court record to take a look at Lord Pierce's spell compendium. Garrett Pierce knows a seemingly insignificant spell called Wild Shape. With it, he can control a body of water and shape it into any complex shape he wants. He, then he can freeze that liquid, maintaining its current shape. A shape... like a sword. What? Now, is it possible that he... What do I... What do I have to say for yourself, Lord Pierce? What do I have to say? Pierce's breathing becomes more frantic. He's clearly not being used. He's clearly not used to being put in a corner like this. You can see his stress and frustration emanating from the Eye of Horus. You have him now. Time for the finishing blow. Argument. I'll tell you exactly what I have to say, you commoner. I'm not on trial here. We're here because that bastard child didn't know her place. She's just a peasant. Yet she still learned the arcane arts. And look what happened. I saw the murder, I witnessed everything. That girl used our holy arts to murder her father in a fit of rage. No. No you didn't. You absolutely did not see everything. And how, pray tell, did you see everything? If you recall, you testified that you only took a single step inside the inn. But you would have needed to be within 15 feet to see my client with Conjure Light. This again. If you're going to keep treading on that one detail, then I admit it. I stepped further into the end. I kept that detail out of my testimony. Because all because I knew you'd use it to cast suspicion on me. Look, Lord Pierce. But you didn't just keep that detail from your testimony, did you? You testified the opposite. That makes you guilty of committing perjury. No, no, I, I, I mean, 
Ugh, you miserable wreck! Garrick Pierce has openly committed, admitted to committing perjury in the courtroom. His lies have, haven't gone unnoticed. And let's not stop there. For your story to be true, you would have needed to be within 15 feet of my client. According to your testimony, my client had just finished committing a murder. Wouldn't she have noticed you? I... I... If you were that close, then you would have surely been close enough to apprehend her. So, why didn't you? You have a duty to your citizens. Shut up. Shut your door and your dirty peasant mouth. That woman was armed. I had no reason to put my life in danger. She was wielding her sword after the murder. I was terrified when I saw her holding that bloody sword. My life was in danger. Now, it really wasn't. But that can't be right, can it, Lord Pierce? This photo of the crime scene shows that the sword was left in the victim's body. And how could she still be wielding her sword if she left it there? What? What? I... Ugh! Damn you! Damn you! Steelwind, why aren't you saying anything? What? Well, what? Uh, um, I... Prosecutor Steelwind has lost her usual air of self- uh, air of confidence. You find it strange, though. Even though- even when you had the advantage, she always maintained her usual poise. Well, Lord Pierce, please pull yourself together. How can I remain calm when this charlatan is trying to frame me? This is a complete travesty of our justice system. I came here to reveal the truth and testify against that criminal. And what do I get instead? Slander from one from some lowly defense attorney. Then why the perjury? You talk about justice, but you've committed several acts of perjury to twist the outcome of this trial. You're clearly not acting in good faith. You don't care about justice. You just want to further your agenda. So admit it, Pierce. You created a makeshift sword using shaped liquid, and you used it to impale Flinhart. You shoved my client's sword into the wound, while the remnants of the real murder weapon evaporated. It was a perfect crime, wasn't it? I... I... <laughs> what? <laughs> Lord Pierce, my apologies, Your Honor. It's just that I realized something absolutely hilarious. What? Has he finally lost his mind? The defense put forward an interesting theory. But there's only one problem. It. And what's that? I think you said it yourself. You shoved Celeste's, you shoved Celeste's sword 
into the wound while the remnants of the real murder weapon evaporated. It was a perfect crime, wasn't it? You see, it would have been a perfect crime. Because any evidence to support that theory would have evaporated with that frozen blade. What? No. He's right. If he used an ice blade to kill Flynnhart, it would have evaporated by now. And that means there would be nothing left of the murder weapon. You've spun quite the tale here today, but in the end, you don't have a shred of evidence to support it, do you? You have nothing on me. It... isn't there anything we can do? You become quiet. Tyrion? Why isn't he saying anything? Is it really hopeless? But all it takes is one look at the expression on your face. Any worry she has instantly disappears. Because she realizes the expression on your face is the same expression you made every time you defeated her. What? Well, what is this? You can glare at me all you want. It won't change the fact that you lost. I despise people like you. You twist the system to serve your own ends. You trample on the lives of the innocent. But as long as I'm here, I will never let that happen again. Not can remain sincere. Empowered I. Ugh, what did I just do? Your head feels like it's about to burst. The pain is unbearable and overwhelming. But at the same time, you feel an extreme sense of clarity. As if you could... As if you can see more than you could before. I can't believe this knack peasant pushed me this far. Once again, you see Pierce's thoughts for the Eye of Horus. But, this sensation feels different from how it usually is. It's more intense this time. More intense and potent. It's almost as if you can do more than just read his surface thoughts. We have gained the ability to project items into his mind. If we get him thinking about the murder weapon, or about the murder at all, we will have, uh, we might have be able to get enough insight to implicate him. So, we know what, we know what his weapon was, kind of. We know he used magic to commit the murder. So, Let's go ahead and present this. After all the trouble I went to, I can't believe that lawyer figured out the spell I used. Well, no matter. It's not as if there's any evidence to prove that I used it. I'm lucky that fool had that bottle of water with him. Water from a bottle. Wait, a bottle? Well then, as riveting as this has been, 
I believe it's time for me to take my leave. Now, wait a minute, Pierce. What is it now, you wretch? Oh, say it as many times as you need to hear. There is no evidence of a liquefied weapon at the crime scene. <coughs> oh, but there is. You're right, Pierce. If you did use shaped liquid on a body of water, the murder weapon would have evaporated entirely. Oh, it seems you've finally gotten that fat through your thick head. Bravo. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, Pierce. What if you didn't use shape liquid on a body of water? What if it was another type of liquid? What are you going on about? Pierce, shape liquid doesn't just work on water. It works on all liquids. This shattered bottle contains the liquid that you cast your spell on, didn't it? You show him the picture of the shattered bottle of lotus juice. That bottle. Pierce, I found the shattered bottle on the ground near the victim's body. I wonder what caused it to shatter. You must have decided to use any liquid you could find. Luckily for you, the victim was holding the perfect quantity of liquid in his hands. I wonder, Lord Pierce, if we had someone analyze the broken pieces of this bottle, would we find traces of transmutation magic? You little. That still proves nothing. So what if there are traces of magic on the on the shattered bottle? You still don't have the murder weapon. I wasn't finished, Pierce. What? You see, the liquid contained in this bottle wasn't water. It was soda. So what difference does that make? A blade of ice made out of water would have evaporated entirely. But a blade of ice made out of soda would leave a puddle of dried residue. No, it can't be. I'd wondered why there was such a circular trace of magic on your body. If we checked the outline of that trace, I bet we'd find a dried puddle of soda residue. That will prove that you used magic on that soda. There's your murder weapon, Pierce. And that's checkmate. <laughs> Bailiff, tell Orem to analyze the crime scene at once. We must determine if this puddle of soda residue exists. The time to find missing traces of magic is closing. And that it is. So, we had our team search the crime scene for that soda puddle, and I really can't believe it, but we found it. In fact, the outline of the dried soda lines up with the outline of the trace of transmutation magic. I think we'll be going a little bit longer than usual for this episode. We checked the broken bottle, too. And there were traces of transmutation magic on it as well. There's no doubt about it, someone used magic on that soda. I see. Thank you, Orum. Please escort Lord Pierce back to the stand. What do you have to say for yourself, Pierce? <laughs> what do you think you've accomplished here today? 
You all stay think you can indict me. I'm an aristocrat from the highest echelons of our society. That fool of a man was an insurgent. He was a threat to society, and I did my civic duty by removing him. Objection! Bailiff, please escort the witness to a holo cell. Stop the field wind. First degree murder is punishable by execution, old Pierce. I suggest you remain silent, lest you incriminate yourself further. What? What? You can't be serious. Shut your insidious mouth. Well, what are you all waiting for? Take him away. Uh, yes, take him away at once. I can't believe it. We actually won. Tyrion, I... It's all she can do to hold back her tears. You don't have to say anything. Your face says it all. Thank you. You've more than exceeded my expectations today, Miss Tamora. I'll be honest. When I realized that the murder weapon evaporated, I thought this case was shot. I can't believe you were able to turn that around. It was just us. If he had used water, we would have been done for. It had nothing to do with luck. You were able to deduce which liquid he had, and you did it just by looking at a few shards of broken glass. Your skills of deduction never cease to amaze me. That's not exactly true. But with Celeste there, you can't tell her about your new ability. You are... You all are quite lively. There is n no need for further hostility. Though, I wouldn't have expected any less from the Hound of the Eye Taker. Wait, what did she mean by that? You glance at Miss Tamora. But when she meets your gaze, she immediately looks away. It's like she's focusing. Almost as if to protect yourself from a certain eye. I must admit, I was uh, hoping to test my blade against you directly. However, your protege proved to be a worthy adversary. Um, thank you? Is this some kind of game to you? You talk about trials like there's some kind of competition. Your action almost condemned an innocent woman to death. Our system operates by having two powers of opposition. When those powers are balanced, justice prevails. Make no mistake, your victory today was just our system working as intended. <laughs> Working as intended. You know as you know very well, our system it only exists to protect your people. I know. What? In any case, it looks like we'll be facing each other more frequently in the future. I look forward to doing battle with you. Tyrion Cuthbert. What a strange girl. Uh, well, that kind of killed the mood, didn't it? Not at all. I think we should celebrate. Oh, what did you have in mind? 
there's this amazing restaurant in the upper quarter of the capital city. They only, they usually only serve nobles, but they don't let anyone in if they have enough gold. Wait, do we have enough gold? Of course we do. Don't worry about the details. I'll handle everything. Wait, just how much money does Mr. Mora make? And so began my journey into the world of law and magic. Our justice system is so rotten to its core, and I'll have many trials ahead. Regardless, I'll keep fighting on and get justice for every one of my clients. Episode in. This, this feeling, I knew it. His radiant soul has awakened. I can't believe it. I've been waiting for so long. I can't wait for the day when I can see his eyes draped in agony. And next time on Let's Play Tyrion Chopper, Attorney of the Arcane, we will head in to Case 2. I will see you then. Mm.